So again, we are on page five of your notebook, and what we're working on today is solving equations, adding and subtracting. Probably should put a colon there to be really grammatically correct. Um, I want you to make this table with me. I used to have this as a poster on my wall above the board. It got a little faded last year and I took it down. I should probably put it back up so you guys can, don't have to flip in your notebooks to see this. But when we're solving equations, we do what's called the inverse. Inverse operations help us solve equations. And so when I see addition, what's the inverse of addition? Subtraction. Subtraction. And when I see subtraction, I do addition. Now, even though tomorrow we're going to be focusing on multiplication and division, I'd like this all in one section of your notes together. So let's add when I see multiplication. I do division. And when I see division, this is always the hard one. I do multiplication. And we'll look at that tomorrow. It, it doesn't look like what we're normally used to seeing in problems when we see division in a problem. And just so you guys know, I won't be here tomorrow. I have a meeting in Renton. No. You might see me before school or after because I've got stuff I might be doing here, but Mrs. Forsyth will be here and you guys will be just fine. I might record the lesson and put it on YouTube today to make it easier so you guys know what I want you to say. And then Mrs. Forsyth is awesome at math, so you can definitely ask her questions. Okay, so we're going to do some example problems down here. You guys have done this before. It's part of how you ended up in this class, is that you know how to solve one-step equations, but we work with some slightly more challenging numbers in algebra. So, oops, I said example. I meant examples. We're going to do more than one. If I have x minus 10 equals 4, this is connecting us to this chart we just made. What do we see in this problem? Subtraction. So if I see subtraction, what do I do? Our goal is to get this variable isolated or by itself. And so by adding 10 to both sides, I'm going to say negative 10 and positive 10 equals 0. What's left on the left side of the equation? X. X. What's left on the right side? 14. And then we check. We go back to the problem. We put the number in where the X was, and we see if it works. 14 minus 10 is 4. 4 equals 4, so it checks. Like I said though, you guys have seen lots of problems like these in the past, but in algebra we start using more complex numbers than you might have worked on in seventh or eighth grade math. So if I have two fifths equals x minus one fifth, now we're dealing with fractions. I want to show you two ways to solve this. And I'm going to make a confession as your math teacher. I'm not a fan of fractions. They drive me crazy. Now, your book is solving this in a really simple way. They're going, okay, we have the same denominator. I see subtraction, so I do addition. And that's true. We could easily do it that way. Negative one-fifth, positive one-fifth, zero, correct? What do I have on the right then? X. And what do I have on the left? Two-fifths plus one-fifth is? Three-fifths. I could also solve this. Well, first let's check it. Two-fifths equals three-fifths minus one-fifth. Does that equal two-fifths? Yes, it does. You could also solve it by getting rid of the denominator. You guys want to see some math magic here? Yes. This is for the people who are not fans of fractions. I could multiply both sides 
by five over one. This might look confusing today, but we will use it over and over, and I guarantee you in the future, you might see this as a magic trick that helps you out. I'm gonna start off by multiplying by five over one. Why am I gonna do that? I don't want to work with fractions. I'd prefer working with whole numbers. What's the denominator on both of these? If I multiply five over one times two over five, this becomes 10 divided by five is two. Really what happens, this and this cancel. Because it's really five over five, which is one, right? What happens over here? Well, I have to do this times this. So I get 5x minus, what's 5 over 5? But really, 1 fifth and 5 over 1. If I multiply 1 times 5, I get? Five. And 5 times 1 is? And now I have just whole numbers. The problem is I have a 5x here, so I'm going to have to deal with that at the end. And that's going to put us back into having two-fifths as our answer. This is probably not the easiest way. I'm just showing you there's another way to solve it. Does that make sense? Can okay. I get it? Can I get it? Now I'm going to add this one to both sides. Two plus one is, is equal to 5x. 5x is multiplied, so then I have to divide, right? What do I divide by? 5, because I want to get the x by itself. 5 over 5 is invisible 1, 3 fifths. I'm ending up with 3 fifths is equal to x in both of them. Again, it's not necessarily the best way to solve this problem, but it was an opportunity to show you guys there's a way of getting rid of fractions. Okay? So we'll come back to that when it's a more complex problem where it helps. Okay, I'm running out of room, but I want to try a couple more problems with you guys. Let me know if I go off screen because I know I'm at the bottom of my page. Um, how about if I have x plus 1 half is equal to 1. I see addition, so I'm going to do... What am I going to subtract? Can you write that as a decimal if you want? It means the same thing. 1 half minus 1 half is going to give me 0. That leaves me with just the x. What's 1 minus 1 half? One half. Can I go back and check it? Yes. One half plus one half equals one whole, and so it checks. Feels like review so far? Can I see some thumbs up sideways? Where are we at? Mostly up, but needs some practice, is what I'm feeling, yes? Okay. One more example, and I'm going to flip to page four. Again, normally I would have you guys just use this for some practice problems, but today we're going to do what's called solving equations. By adding the opposite. Your book separates these out from regular problems. I think they're pretty close to the same thing. If I have negative 8 plus x equals 2, okay. what's different about this one? Instead of the scene saying x minus 8, it's the negative 8 is out in front. So we're just going to add the opposite. What's the opposite of the negative 8? Eight? Eight. Eight. Right. And the deal is we're trying to get the x by itself. So whatever the number is that's with there, with the x, we want to look at the number and do the opposite to it. This is a negative, which is really subtraction. So what are we going to add? The opposite to it. 
And I heard somebody right away say it's going to be 10. Doesn't that make sense? Question? It's basically what we're doing, yeah. We're going to go back. You could also rewrite it this way, right? The x is positive. Positives are invisible if they're at the front of an equation. The 8 is negative. I just used commutative property and rewrote them. Same idea, right? We would still just add 8 to it. But how do we check it? Negative 8 plus 10 equals 2. Does that make sense? Negative 8 plus 10 equals 2. It does, so it checks. Let's try one with a decimal. By the way, I'm taking these examples straight out of the book, and the book is using all sorts of different variables, but x is my favorite, so I'm only using x. How am I going to solve this problem? I want to get the x by itself. What's with the x right now? Negative 2.3. Yep. So I want to add the opposite. And I end up with x is equal to 9.3. If we want to check it, negative 2.3 plus 9.3 is equal to 7. Well, the decimal take care, takes care of itself, right? Yeah. So now we're just dealing with the whole number in front of it. Negative 2, positive 9 gives us 7. seven. This solving equations by adding the opposite is basically what you do if your equation starts off with a negative number that's with the variable, but it's really just like how we would have solved it here if I had reversed it and put the negative 8 after. So you guys are going to have some problems in your book to do. Um, you're going to be working today on page 80. And I want you to do <coughs> numbers 2 through 19. And yeah, that's, what time is it? 33? Yeah, we have a little bit of time. Um, and I want you to do number 50. Okay, I am definitely of the opinion that you need to be checking your work as you go. There's two ways to check your work. I'd like to see a check, just like we did up here, if it's an even number. Why the even numbers? Because the odd answers are in the back of your book. You can do this for all of them if you want, or you can flip to the back of your book and check the odds. Okay? but I want to see evidence that you've checked your work. Why? That's how we form bad math habits. If we keep doing the same thing and we're not finding out that we're doing it wrong, it starts to become set, right? So you want to check yourself as you're going. You can check the odds in the back of your book. The evens, you're going to check the old school way like I did with my examples.